Stephen Curry's an NBA legend, but there's still so much you don't know about. Addictions, nearly killing an NBA player, helping an inmate escape jail. Here's 10 things you didn't know about Stephen Curry. And first, let's talk about the time he ruined the NBA. Once Steph won his first MVP and championship, the only thing he had left to chase was legendary status. So this man came out the next year, having one of the greatest seasons in NBA history. And you'd think that'd be a good thing, but it turned out he actually ruined NBA 2K? See, the game's developers have been creating a formula that rewarded players for good shot selection and punished players for bad shot selection. In game, contested and extremely long range shots were nearly impossible to make. But in real life, Steph was not only taking those shots, he was making those shots. So 2K's engineers didn't know what to do. Cause Steph was so broken, he was basically a cheat code. How are we gonna put this guy that shot 47% from the three point line into this game without breaking the game? I remember then, that was, you know, Steph was a cheat code that year. Kids wanna duplicate it. So they're, you know, they're my career players. They all wanted to build Steph. And like that, you know, it was kind of breaking that online experience of being able to play. So to balance Steph among all the other players, 2K's developers had to completely re-engineer the game just so Steph wasn't overpowered. Yeah, Steph became so unstoppable in real life, it literally changed the game. But at least he only ruined a game. What if I told you Steph has a disease that could ruin his life? See, Steph was well on his way to becoming the greatest shooter ever. Throughout his career, he made three-pointers 43% of the time until his shot hit an unusual decline. Out of nowhere, Steph went on his worst shooting slump ever. His shot dropped down to 36%. But regardless, he was still voted into the All-Star game till at the event. In front of the entire world, Steph had one of the worst shooting games of his career. Now, instead of his typical 43%, he was only shooting 23%. So he practiced and practiced, but nothing was working. Something was wrong, and Steph knew it. So he did the only thing he could think of visit the doctor. But that's when Steph found out some devastating news. Low key, he was suffering from an eye disease causing blurred vision and Steph's eyesight was declining quickly. So as soon as the world found out, he was asked about it during interviews. Steph, can you uh, kind of describe the, the condition that was going on with your eye disease? It's just a tough situation every day waking up. But luckily, doctors had a possible solution. Special contacts. And what happened when Steph put them in? Here comes Curry. Curry for three. Bang! Yeah, his three-point shooting reached a career high, 51%. And Steph publicly gave all the credit to his new contacts. But behind the scenes, he's secretly been getting fined by his mom? Uh, yeah. When Steph came into the NBA, he was already a solid shooter, playmaker, and defender. But one part of his game was so bad, he needed help from his mom. So they put together a little agreement, forcing him to fix his problem. And if he didn't, it was gonna cost him millions. At the time, Steph was averaging over three turnovers per game. So they agreed that if Steph had more than three in a game, he had to pay his mom $100 for every turnover. Now at first, he was only throwing her a couple Couple hundred, but eventually it turned into thousands. And by the end of the season, Steph gave the ball away so much, he paid his mom over 7K. So even though he put so much money on the line, Steph was never able to get over his turnover habit and kept averaging three turnovers a game. But recently, reporters found out about Steph's bet. Do you still pay your mom for those turnovers? Yeah, the check stopped cashing a couple years ago. She still calls it out for sure. Damn, with all the money Steph gave his mom, she still couldn't even afford one of his game-worn mouth guards. I mean, one literally sold for 25k. But if they're worth that much, haven't you ever wondered why every single game, Steph purposely ruins them? Well, it all started when Steph was in college playing for Davidson. And one game, he suffered a devastating injury. 
But I got elbowed in college uh, my junior year and kind of busted my lip open. Ever since, he hasn't played a single game without a mouth guard, but the way he chews on it created controversy. Steph admitted that he wears the same mouth guard for six games straight, only 12 different ones per season, and dentists around the globe were pissed. One dentist said, Steph chewing up his mouth guard was a bad influence on kids, because not only was he making it cool to purposely damage his mouth guard, him constantly touching it was putting bacteria in his mouth. Now, for years, we've seen Steph's mouth guard chewing is an iconic ritual. But recently, before Steph even had the chance to admit the real reason why he chews on his mouth guards, ESPN dropped a stat proving their own theory. Apparently, Steph's free throw shooting is deeply affected by him chewing his mouth guards. In 2014, while keeping his mouth guard in place, he shot 89% from the line. But over the next two seasons, while chewing on his mouth guard, he shot 92%, a 3% increase. So because his shot improved, Steph chews on mouth guards every time he steps up. And ever since, he hasn't gone a single season without shooting over 90%. How is that even possible? Well, Steph talked about his real reason, and it got his ass roasted. I just chew on it like crazy. It kind of calms me down, especially when I'm at the free throw line. So yeah. I kind of get in my rhythm. OK, all right. Well, maybe you did you wear it when you played golf with the president? <laughs> no. Maybe you wouldn't have triple bogey the 18th, you know? <laughs> Next time. But at least that joke didn't almost kill somebody, like the time Steph put an NBA player in the hospital. The 2015 NBA Finals quickly turned into chaos. The Cavaliers came out with a game plan, believing they had Steph's kryptonite. And in game two, all cause of one player, Steph had one of the worst games of his career. Not only did he shoot five for 23, 18 misses from three, this man shot two for 15, and he had more turnovers than assists. In Steph's biggest game, he choked that bad? How is that even possible? Well, the very next day, ESPN put Steph on blast, all thanks to Matthew Della Vadova. If Steph Curry had the ball and Della Vadova's in his face, it's going to be a problem. Throughout the first two games, fans felt like Steph was getting close. I mean, I couldn't even open Twitter without seeing the stats. But we all know how much Steph loves social media. So he instantly needed revenge. Steph came out for game three on fire. Shot after shot, he couldn't be stopped. But even though he hit seven threes and dropped 27 points, Della Vadova was there the whole way, having his best game. Diving on loose balls and tightly guarding Steph, not only did Della Vadova drop his own 20 point game, this man was playing his heart out, literally. Until it turned out Steph was so difficult to defend, Della Vadova put his life on the line. And people realized something was up. Because after the best game of Della Vadova's career, he didn't even show up to the post game press conference. And that's when everybody found out Della Vadova was rushed to the hospital. Severe cramping and dehydration was just the beginning of what Della Vadova was diagnosed with. And not only were doctors concerned, Della Vadova's own teammate admitted that Steph almost killed him. He yeah. competed oh. harder than anybody I've ever seen in my life, bro. He was literally oh. about to die in the playoffs. <laughs> like literally, bro, we in the back after the game, like Steph almost killed this man. Now, what did Steph have to say about this situation? Well, he just let his game do the talking. Cause for the rest of the series, Steph cooked Della Vadova and the Cavs averaging over 26 points a game. And not only did Steph carry the Warriors to three straight wins and secure the championship, the world found out that he's been stealing kids' moves? See, over the years, Steph's dribble moves have gone viral. Like the time he made Chris Paul play Twister, got Rudy Gobert dizzy, and literally made Marcus All give up. But if you think Steph came up with those moves, you're wrong. Cause Steph's stealing moves from children? Yeah. When Steph hosted one of his Curry Select camps, a high schooler pulled a move that even Steph was hyped about. That player was Dennis Smith Jr. And at first, nobody knew him or the move until shortly after. Cause Steph pulled up to a Team USA practice 
and embarrassed a trainer with it. Now, of course, an NBA player humiliating someone like this? The video instantly went viral, racking up nearly 10 million views. And Dennis Smith Jr. definitely noticed, because he immediately tweeted about it, admitting he's the one who put Steph onto the move. Steph was caught red-handed. But hey, just 30 minutes later, at least he admitted it, saying, yup, always a student of the game. Now, at least Dennis Smith was in high school, but that ain't the only move Steph stole, because recently, he's been studying 10-year-olds. Uh, yeah. During a Ball is Life camp, a 10-year-old went ballistic. And once Steph witnessed a kid a third of his age moving like that, Steph just had to hop on Instagram and admit what was coming, saying, yo, I just learned two new moves. Damn, Steph's really been in the NBA longer than that kid's been alive. And he's still learning. That's crazy, but not as crazy as Steph's secret bet that won him a championship. During the 2016 NBA Finals, Steph's Warriors went up 3-1, and cause Steph was confident they'd close out the series, he bought an expensive cigar for his championship celebration. But that purchase became the biggest regret of his life. For three straight games, Steph and the Warriors completely choked, becoming the first team in NBA Finals history history to blow a 3-1 lead. And after his historic meltdown, Steph felt he didn't even deserve to smoke. But instead of just trashing the cigar, he gave it to his best friend and told him to keep it for his next championship win. And well, Steph must have been fiending, cause that summer, not only did he force the Warriors to form an absolute super team, the very next year in the 2017 finals, Steph had his greatest championship performance so far to win his second ring. And well, I don't know what dude was happier about. The fact that he became a two-time champion or could finally smoke. Cause he was so excited, he instantly grabbed the cigar and smoked it on live TV. Now that looks delicious by the way, Steph. Damn, Steph, you're really giving Clay flashbacks. <laughs> but see, smoking cigars? I mean, that ain't even close to Steph's darkest secrets. Low key, he has an addiction and the world found out during one of the biggest games of his career. Steph and the Warriors were up 3-2, ready to close out the series. But this man went the entire first half, missing every single one of his shots. So as Steph headed back to the locker room, he knew there was only one thing he could do. Steph couldn't resist his urge. He needed his fix. And when Steph came back out, he turned into a monster. Steph came out in the second half on fire. And in the fourth, he not only dropped 23 points, he went eight for eight from the line and hit the dagger three to close out the series. But what really went down at halftime? Well, the truth is, Steph just had to watch Hoop Flicks? Yeah, even Steph's a fan. So why aren't you? Subscribe. But for real, he also just had to hop on Twitter. Because whenever he's having a bad game, he needs fuel from his haters. And when he was asked why he does it, all he could say was, That's just pure entertainment for me. But see, Steph has more than just a sick mind. He's literally helping inmates escape jail. Recently, Steph researched a case making headlines involving a man named Julius Jones. Julius had been in prison for nearly two decades, and this case stood out to Steph because he saw Julius claim he was framed for a crime he didn't commit. And what Steph found out next kept him up at night. Wednesday, 9.47 p.m., the night of the murder. One family pulled up and noticed a carjacking by a man in a red bandana. But right when the man saw them, he opened fire and fled the scene. The family's dead. Paul was bleeding out and eventually passed away. So detectives opened an all out investigation and promised the family that justice would be served. They gathered all the evidence they could and eventually tracked down the weapon, which was wrapped in a red bandana. And they found it inside Julius's home and he was arrested. At trial, Julius and his family claimed it was impossible for him to be the murderer, that Julius was home with them that night, and he didn't match the description of the killer. But it didn't matter what they claimed, he was found guilty of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit robbery, and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. 
But that ain't even the worst of it all. Steph heard that Julius was also sentenced to execution. And Steph felt there was no way he could live with himself if he didn't at least try to help. Steph found a way to call Julius to find out the truth. And once Steph heard his side of the story, Steph told him he'd stay on board and fight for him. And instantly after, Steph publicly posted his support. Steph went as far as getting all of his Warriors teammates to meet Julius' family. But nothing was more important than what Steph did next. Because he raised so much awareness towards the case, people all over the world began showing their own support. Now, everybody was wondering why Steph was so passionate about this one case. And well, this is the right thing to do. It's an important opportunity to change you know, someone's life that deserves an opportunity to be, to be free. And now, you'd think with Steph being an NBA player, he'd only have an impact on a basketball court. Not actual court. But on the day that Julius's execution was scheduled, because of all the attention and support that Steph raised, the execution was called off. Steph single-handedly saved this man's life. But to Steph, it's just another day. Because secretly, he's also been changing the world. In 2019, Steph realized how blessed he was and didn't want to take his platform for granted. Deep down, Steph not only wanted to give back, he wanted to change lives. And that's why he started the Eat Learn Play Foundation. Up to this point, Steph started this with three goals in mind. One, to provide all kids with quality education. Two, create safe places for kids to be active. And three, end childhood hunger. And well, these goals completely changed Oakland, California. Throughout the area, Steph's foundation collab with school districts and food banks to improve the lives of low-income families. The foundation's been able to donate 15 million meals to tens of thousands of families. And in addition, Steph's foundation also helped out during the holidays. And as time goes on, he's only donating more. And in my eyes, none of Steph's MVPs or championships top that incredible accomplishment. But you want to know what does? LeBron James. Because this dude destroyed teams so badly, he's gotten coaches fired. And that's not even it. LeBron made Michael Jordan's own teammates call him the greatest of all time. I know you want to hear more about that. So just click this video right here.